this is Lori, and welcome to my new series on the Raspberry Pi Pico W. In this video, we'll get started using the Pico W. We'll solder headers on, we'll load a MicroPython UF2 file, we'll download an IDE so we can program it, and we'll run our first program. Here's a picture of the Raspberry Pi Pico W. You can see the RP2040 chip that powers this microcontroller. It has a two megabyte flash memory. There's a boot select button that we'll use to put it in the proper mode to load on the MicroPython UF2 file. There's a built-in LED on the board. We'll use that in our first program. There's a micro USB connector that we'll use to connect this into our computer for programming and also you can power the board that way. Um, there's a wireless module here and that's where the W comes from that we'll be able to put this on our uh, wireless network with an antenna that goes with it. And then you can see that there are pins on both sides of the Pico W. Those are our GPIO pins that we'll use to connect up electronic components to control them. Here's the pinout diagram for the Pico W. Now these are relatively complicated when you're first getting started, but they tell you a little bit about what each of the pins does on the Raspberry Pi Pico and the various functions that it can uh, fulfill. Um, but when you're just getting started, maybe the basics is knowing which ones are ground and what the numbering system is for them and so forth. So, you know, maybe concentrate mostly on the ones that are closest uh, in towards the Pico W and you'll eventually, as you go along, learn a little bit about um, the other functions that these pins can do. There's some of the power uh, pins as well, so we can see where we can get power out of the Pico. So those are the important pins to focus on, and you may want to have this uh, diagram printed out and available to you. There are a lot of resources to learn about the Raspberry Pi Pico and Pico W. Um, and these are a couple books that I found useful as I've been working on them. Um, there's a free book from uh, the Raspberry Pi uh, Book Foundation, Magpie, I guess it is, and I left a link here so you can see where you can get to it. And then Simon Monk also wrote a book about programming the Pico. Now this book has got a little bit more information about using uh, MicroPython, um, and this book is probably a little bit more about jumping in and getting electronic components running on it and you kind of learn the Python as you go. So they kind of speak to different types of learners, but um, I found both of them nice to have handy. Now it's time to solder on some headers to our Pico W if you bought one that doesn't have headers. So I'm tinning up my soldering iron and getting it ready to go. Yeah, it looks good and silvery and primed. I'll use a little flux pen. I find adding a little flux helps. I'm not great at soldering, so it usually helps it flow a little bit better for me. So that's what I do. And you can see that I put the headers into a breadboard to hold them still while I'm soldering it on. And we'll pick it up, put it on, get it set up so it's nice and flat. There we go. So I always try to tack the four corners first and then fill in. And I find uh, as little solder as possible is the way to go. And uh, just to take your time. Don't have to be perfect as long as you uh, get a decent joint and don't uh, connect any pins, you're doing good. And um, I'm not an expert at it, so uh, I mean really after a little bit of time anybody can do it if you just take your time and go slowly. Get the last corner here. Fortunately I started hitting my camera because it was a really tight fit to have the camera close. There we go. Moving along. Get the last of the this side. So when you say MicroPython, you might think that that's just one version of Python for microcontrollers, but it turns out that there's actually several flavors of MicroPython. And so there are three that you could use with your Raspberry Pi, Pico, or Pico W. There's the standard MicroPython 
which you can get to from the Raspberry Pi uh, web pages. Adafruit has a version of MicroPython that they call CircuitPython, and uh, there's a link there for you to get to that. And then um, if you use any Pimeroni products that are based around the Pico, um, you'll also maybe be interested in their version of MicroPython, which typically is very similar to the standard version, except for they've added in all the libraries to use their various products. So uh, in this series of videos for now, we're going to use the standard MicroPython, unless for some reason we really need to use CircuitPython or a Pimeroni library. Now we want to get the MicroPython UF2 file uh, so that we can program our Pico. And as I mentioned, there are three different places, maybe more, that we could load a various versions. Um, I found it easy to find the Raspberry Pi connection to the more standard MicroPython. So if you go to that web page um, or Google it up, you'll find, uh, you'll find this page that talks about MicroPython and gives some nice information about it. And if you scroll down, you'll find uh, some links to the MicroPython UF2 file. So um, if you have a regular Raspberry Pi Pico, you'd load this one. And if you have the Pico W, um, you'd click on this one and download it. Now, if you want to find the CircuitPython one, you can go to circuitpython.org. And under the Pico W, you'll see that there is a download UF2 file uh, button. And that's how you'd get the CircuitPython version. And then if you need the um, Pimeroni version, because perhaps you have one of their products that's based on the Pico, um, you can find that product. I happen to just pick one of their products. But under all those products that use the Pico or Pico W, you'll find a link in the software section, and it'll say something like download pirate brand MicroPython. They sometimes refer, refer to this as batteries included MicroPython, but that just means they use the standard MicroPython, and they've already added in all the libraries um, to use their products. So that'd be the reason that you'd want to use a Pimeroni version is that you have one of their products and you'd like to use the libraries that they've written for those. Now we're ready to load the UF2 file onto our Pico W. To do that, we'll want to connect up our Pico W to our computer using a USB cable with the micro USB end. So you gotta make sure you have the right end to plug in here. And uh, to load a UF2 file onto it, we'll need to press the boot select button at the same time we're plugging it in. So we'll press that, plug it in, and let go. So as we press the button and plugged it in, you should have seen this RPI, RP2, USB drive um, show up. And that's our uh, Pico. And you can see here I have my downloads folder open. And uh, I actually have all three versions of uh, MicroPython, what we've been discussing and uh, on here, uh, but I'm going to uh, flash this Pico with um, the standard one. So this is the one that I downloaded recently, and to do that we'll just drag it right on top and let it go, and we should see it start to copy over. And it should only take a couple of seconds for it to copy it over onto it. And then it'll eject it. You notice it came out. Uh, ejected it and so now it's all flashed and ready for us to program. So once we get MicroPython on our Pico we'll need some way to connect to the Pico to move programs to it and we'd like a nice environment to write those MicroPython programs and so Thawney is a free uh, IDE that we can use for that and you can see the link here and so we're going to go and download that onto our computer and use it. So here we are at thawney.org, and you can see it um, just tells us it's a Python IDE for beginners. And uh, I've been using it for quite some time. I find it um, suitable, it's simple, it doesn't require a lot of messing with, so I've actually been using it for quite some time to do Python programming. Um, but uh, you just need to pick out which, uh, which system you have. I happen to have a Mac, so I'll click on that. 
and you can download it. And it will download, take a few minutes to download, not minutes, a few seconds. There we go, almost done. And then you can double click on it and start the install procedure. Now I've already installed it, so I'm not going to uh, finish this out, but just follow the screens and you'll have Thawney installed on your uh, computer. Time to run our first program on the Pico W. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have our Pico W connected up to our computer through the USB. And we need to make sure with Thawney open that um, Thawney is connected to that Pico as well. So down here in the bottom, you'll see several choices. Um, and you need to make sure you have the Pico as the choice that you want. So you know that you're connected. And in here in the shell, you'll see the version and you'll see MicroPython. So you know you're in the right place. Um, so next, let's uh, just talk a little bit about the program we're going to do. So we're going to blink the internal LED. And to do that, we're going to import the machine library. And then we're going to import the sleep function from the uTime or time library. They're the same library, so uh, they both point to the same place. You can use time or uTime. And then we're going to set up the internal LED pin uh, using the LED label. And we'll set it up as an output. If you have a regular Pico, you could do this by doing the same piece of code but referring to pin number 25, which is the pin that the internal LED is on for the Pico, the regular Pico. Then in our while true loop, we'll uh, turn the internal LED on using a 1. We'll sleep for a second and we'll turn the uh, LED off using a 0 and we'll sleep for a second. So that should cause it to flash. So let's give it a go. And there we go. We're blinking the internal LED. Awesome. Now we can also blink the uh, LED using the toggle function. So you can see everything's the same uh, in this piece of code, except for made it much simpler by using the toggle function and then sleeping for a uh, second. So we'll turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off. So let's run that and just see how it goes. And yep, does the same thing, but a little simpler, less coding. Oh, 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 oh,